Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's video, we are going to be doing a full length, full feature review of the new MSI GS73 VR Stealth Pro with the NVIDIA GTX 1070 Max Q edition. So today we decided we'd like to save you some time and skip the opening of the box. We got everything unpacked and ready to rock and roll. Here you can see we've got the laptop out for display and fully powered up. Spinning it around so you can get a first look, see how thin and light this laptop is. Of course, we'll dive into all of these connections on the outside in a moment. Let's go ahead and get this laptop on the scale so you can see its weight. All right, so the laptop alone is going to come in at five pounds and three ounces. And for your full carry weight, if you're going to take the power adapter with you, it's going to be at six pounds and 14 ounces. So we're under seven pounds for the full package. All right, now for measurement to get things in scale for you, here is a standard quarter and penny. Our ruler is showing that the laptop is under one inch in the rear side and well under one inch on the front side as well. Mostly flat parameter. It's not quite the wedge shape you see in some of the bigger gaming laptops. This keeps it very low profile and easy to slide into a bag or a sleeve. All right, so now it's time to get back to the carousel, take a nice zoom in and take a look at all of the user interfaces. So on the front side, we have no connections, but we do have our status LEDs. Over to the left-hand side, we're looking at a USB 3.0 port, the Thunderbolt port, HDMI output, mini display port, and the DC port for powering the laptop and charging the battery. Swinging around to the rear side, we have no connections to the rear either, just the exhaust for the cooling system. And then finally, as we get to the left-hand side, we have our Kensington lock port, the RJ45 networking port by Killer, the SD card slot, three USB 3.0 ports, and our two 3.5 millimeter audio connections, one for your headphones and one for a microphone. Okay, so now that we've covered the outside interfaces, it's time to look at the inside interfaces, which is of course your touchpad and your keyboard and your microphone and your HD webcam. So we have the single oversized touchpad in the center with the integrated left and right clicks. We have a very beautiful LED backlit keyboard. Now this is a low profile chiclet style keyboard and each and every key can be controlled for your colors by the software. Here's a close up of some of the advertised features on the sticker. GTX 1070, Series 7, i7, the Thunderbolt technology, the RGB keyboard, the matrix display, high res audio, and a lot more. Now the screen is going to be a 1080p TN panel, but of course the laptop can not put out full 4K if you use an external display. And up above we have the integrated webcam and microphone. All right, so with the outside of the system covered, it's time to move into the internal components. And here is a list of those in the device manager. Some of the highlights are of course the i7, 7700HQ CPU, that's from the newest Cabby Lake series. Information on our computer screen here, here's the monitor panel. We've got the 120 Hertz refresh rate on our screen. And here is our standard 1920 by 1080p resolution. And lastly, our final specs check is going to be the graphics card. Here is the NVIDIA GTX 1070 Max Q edition. And this is going to be the biggest part of the review is testing this card out to see if it lives up to the claims to be using less power, run cooler, but still give us the same performance of a standard 1070. All right, so now it's time to start some benchmarks, but before we do that, let's get our controlled readings. So here is the current ambient temperatures for the CPU at about 70 degrees Celsius and the graphics card at about 47 degrees Celsius. All right, so now moving into the benchmarking section of our review, the very first thing we're gonna do is get our feet wet and just break out that thermal camera and show you all of our outside temperatures 
based on the laptop at its idle state. So best thing to look for here is any kind of heat leaks. If there's any spots that are hot that shouldn't be, what you do want to see is the keyboard usually lets some air out and lets that cool the laptop down. And you want to see the exhaust having most of the heat in the back. The other thing that we're going to be testing for while we're still sitting at an idle state is going to be the current noise levels. These are going to be read with a noise meter and we're putting it right next to the exhaust so we can see how loud the exhaust system is. And of course we'll retake these readings again when we get the system under load running our performance benchmarks. All right, so now it is time for the performance benchmarks to kick off. The part that most people are really interested in is seeing how great this system will perform, especially with the reduced load GPU that's using less electricity and less heat. So usually performance is always a cost of that. So let's see how it does. Now, while the system's under load with the benchmark, let's retake those readings for the noise and also for the temperatures. Also, while we're running these tests, this is a good time to mention that the screen is the standard 1080p TN panel, which does not have the greatest view angles, as you can see as we're going back and forth. During the ordering process, you do have the option to upgrade to the 4K screen, and that's an IPS panel. It'll have much better view angles and the extra resolution. Both of those could be important to you, depending on what you're going to use your laptop for. And just keep in mind that anything you upgrade through our store is covered under your warranty. So getting back to the temperature test after we've done the noise testing, you can definitely see the temperatures have risen with the load of the benchmark, but nothing extreme. Everything is holding its temperatures as it should be. No hot spots where the hands are going to be keeping it a nice comfortable experience. The nice red glow in the back where the exhaust is at showing that all the air is coming out the backside like it's supposed to. And here we can see our hottest readings right now, shy of 50 degrees Celsius. Time to check in with our scores. And as we can see, Firestrike came in at 12,060 points for the score. Down below, the GPU-Z information once again for our graphics card, the 1070 Max Q Edition. And let's check the temperatures. Our CPU at 90 degrees Celsius on the single core that got the hottest. The rest are in the high 80s. And the GPU at a 69 degrees Celsius maximum temperature. So we're not quite done yet. Still more benchmarks and stress tests coming your way. Right now, Cinebench R15 is running. We'll let this run through its rotation and it will give us some rankings and the performance scores for how many frames per second that it can render. And as that finishes, OpenGL was at 97 frames per second. And on the arbitrary ranking, it got the top of the list. Down below for the CPU, we're ranking somewhere in the middle. And of course, the CPUs up above it are much more powerful desktop CPUs. So that's not quite a fair comparison. Blender 2.78. So here we have some 3D modeling software. There is a nice little benchmark where we render the entire planet Earth that we're about to run in a moment. So here is all of our current settings.
and the test has begun. So this will take quite a while. We'll let that time lapse go in the background so you don't have to sit and watch the entire process. All right, so the scores are in and the GTX 1070 Max Q Edition did great. It actually got a score of 24 minutes. And compared to say the GTX 1080, that took 22 minutes. That's only a two minute difference. And this card runs about 12 degrees cooler. We got about 82 degrees Celsius on those tests versus the 69 of this card. And of course, that's a really respectable score. And we're saving a lot of heat and power, which is great for a laptop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now with all of our benchmarks being concluded, it's time for the disassembly. So this laptop is going to require quite a bit of work to take apart. Many, many small screws must be removed from the entire perimeter before that bottom cover comes off. Now with the cover removed, make sure you understand that this could void your warranty if this was a new system. We see immediately that we have access to pretty much nothing that would matter. We have one two and a half inch drive here that we can get out. We have the internal battery and we can see our cooling fans and a couple of our accessory cards such as the wireless module and Bluetooth. The message to take home here is that this is not a very user friendly laptop for user upgrades. So if you're not happy with the specs as they come out of the box, it would be highly recommended that you actually order those upgrades through the store so that a professional could do the upgrades and have it covered under warranty so it doesn't void any warranty terms. And now, even with that said, we are still going to take the system apart so you can see what it looks like in the name of science. So our two and a half inch mass storage drive is removed. The internal battery is removed. Our accessory cards are removed. As you can see, those were attached by a ribbon cable. The motherboard itself is also removed from the system. On the opposite side of the motherboard is where the RAM slots and our M2 SSD are located. The other thing that should be easy to see from this angle is the cooling fans. We have not one or two, but actually three cooling fans in this system. Two of those being dedicated to the graphics card. Tons of heat pipes to get the heat transferred away from the components and into the fans to get sent out of the system. And that, everyone, is going to be the end of our review for today. We very much hope that you were able to enjoy today's full-length feature review for the MSI GS73 VR, and that our video is able to answer any questions that you might have had about the laptop. Of course, if you have any other questions that we weren't able to answer in the video, feel free to ask down below in the comments section, and we can answer your question for you and everybody else. If you need that one-on-one -on -one personalized help, then feel free to reach out to us and contact us by phone or email. If you want more information on the product, of course, go to the description of the video and find the product link to the product page we have the current pricing and availability. So we just want to remind everybody once again that this was Gen Tech PC, and we'll see you next time.